guys, it's Friday and I hope you're all doing well. So my uploads are going to be a little bit sporadic. Um, I'm, I'm just uh, taking care of someone else right now and so I kind of got to be on um, their schedule. Um, but it's cool, like it's nothing like terminal or anything, like it's just, you know, going to take time. So, um, but yeah, I uh, was actually thinking about that because um, it's been a long time since I've been able to like really, um, take care of someone else, you know, and, um, it's like the benefit of being able to be there for other people. Um, which I know I've heard other people talk about, you know, um, but I think sometimes like that's, that's a problem for people, right? Like it's so easy nowadays to kind of like, for some people, it's like easy to isolate and think that, like, what you need to do to, like, help yourself is, like, you know, just focus on yourself, right? Like, there's a lot of, like, self-care, and I I don't necessarily think all of that's bad, you know, because I definitely want people to take better care of themselves. Like, you know, I'm an American, I pay attention to other Americans, and I've lived in different regions of the United States. I would, like, every American to take better care of themselves, please. And like, also know that, um, local grass fed beef is definitely healthier than sugar covered processed granola with like low fat yogurt. Okay. (laughs) Just pro tip, just pro tip. All right. Um, it's, it's actually very surprising to me when I run into other people here, like, and they still think like, snack well snacks are like healthier than meat you know like I'm like oh my gosh you haven't you haven't heard the news you know like you haven't you haven't caught up yet like please understand um you know contact your local farmer and all that um but yes anyways so I would like more people to take better care of themselves but also being there for one another um I've noticed this like since I was a teenager, you know, but really like starting, I would say in my mid twenties, um, I noticed that people would like drop people for the littlest thing, right? Like it's, it's sort of a weird, um, marker of our time, particularly in the 2010s, right? Like it, it it kind of has to do with the whole woke, like SJW, like, oh, if you'd say that you're canceled kind of thing, which, which isn't just like people being canceled on the internet, right? Like if they have a career as like a journalist or a speaker or a writer, you know? Um, but also like in real life, you know, um, it's, it's not just on the internet, right? Like there's people like teachers, you know, at like a small public school somewhere, right. Or a professor at a small college, um, or, you know, average people like who aren't necessarily like speakers or writers, but because they're not going along. And of course, a lot of people have felt pressure like they, you know, they, they, they'll lose their jobs if they don't conform to, I think typically what it's called in the average American workplace. If you have an HR department, it's like adhering to, um, you know, diversity and inclusion. I think normally like when you get a new job, um, you get your like employee handbook and you go through your training and almost always there's like a diversity and inclusion thing. And like, obviously it means that you have to like, you can't say these things. You have to agree these things. And quite frankly, like it's not that big of a deal, you know, like for someone like me, because like, I don't, um, like I'm not going to go to work and talk about like politics, (laughs) you know, like at work, like I'm just going to be focused on work and getting along with my coworkers, you know, and like, when's lunch, you know, (laughs) like that's pretty much it. (laughs) Um, so yeah, like I, I have, you know, I get into work mode. Like when I clock in, that's it. Like, you know, I don't exist. I'm just a worker. You know, I've always kind of had that mentality. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, but I, I noticed that, but it's, it's also in social circles, right? Like in your friend groups and stuff, like it's just, it's very easy to be put on the outs for even like the littlest perceived, transgression. And notice I said like perceived transgression, right? Um, cause there's a way that like people don't really like an individual gets ousted from like some kind of social group. Right. And technically what they did was harmless. Like it wasn't really anything wrong, but it was perceived that way for maybe like alternative reasons, usually passive aggressive reasons. 
you know, that's another thing I've noticed. Um, and I'm thankful because I've been able to, um, I've noticed like a, a number of people agree with whenever I say like a lot of people are passive aggressive nowadays, right? Like it's almost like, uh, it's, it's, it's a very typical personality trait, um, or way or communication style. Like it's very normal for people to communicate in a passive aggressive way. I've heard people, you know, from the Northeast, um, New England people, tri-state people, like they, they typically just pin that on Southerners in America, right? Like, you know, there's, and you'll see YouTube shorts or TikToks. I've seen plenty of YouTube shorts of like people, you know, making fun of the, oh, bless your heart. You know, like a lot of you probably know that joke about Southern Americans. Like, you know, oh, if you hear a Southern woman say like, oh, bless your heart. Like it means that, you know, it's not genuine, right? It's actually like a passive aggressive, like, oh my gosh, you're messing up big time, right? Like, so, um, like if someone's like, oh yeah, like, you know, their son drinks a lot, you know, in an, and then the woman, oh, bless their heart, which means like, oh, that's messy, you know, like what a loser kind of thing, right? Like it's, yeah, but, um, quite frankly, like, you know, like Northern people will, will just pin it on Southerners, but it's everywhere. It's freaking everywhere. Um, and I definitely noticed passive aggressiveness. Like I, I noticed that, um, like the New England people I've met, like they think they're very, overt like they think of themselves like they're very cynical and they think of themselves as very overt but they're actually also passive aggressive um you know so like it and they just maybe just in a different way right they have different colloquialisms different accents different like um kind of vibes right um but they really pride themselves like they think they're like really direct and honest and they're just telling it like it is you know at least the ones that I've encountered and I do see this in like Nick and Sam sometimes you know um mostly Nick though I've heard Nick say like yeah we're cynical we tell it like it is like but that's not I mean maybe he is maybe Nick Roachford is like that but like the New Englanders I met were still passive aggressive and like and cynicism is not realism, right? Like, I, I feel like a lot of people, um, I don't agree with that. Cynicism is like a defense mechanism, you know, like it's based on fear and it's, it's overly negative. I mean, that's sort of the definition of cynicism, right? It, it's like, you know, otherwise, if you were being re- like, you would just say someone's being realistic. You wouldn't say they're being cynical. Um, so um, I don't, I don't see cynicism as like telling it like it is. That's also something that's always annoyed me about that. And like nihilistic people who think they're just telling it like it is like, no, you're not telling it like it is. You're telling it in the most pessimistic way possible. That's what you're doing. You know, um, it's, you're not being realistic. You're just being pessimistic, you know, um, or just fear based. Right. Or you're being like, I notice sometimes cynical people are, lack, uh, problem solving skills. Right. So it's like, they don't want to do anything because there could be potential problems. Right. Or like, we don't have the absolute ideal, perfect materials for something. So let's not do anything at all because we can't get the absolute perfect materials and we'll have these little problems. So like, instead of trying to work around or like solve problems and get something done anyway, they're just like cynical about it and give up, you know? Um, like that's pessimism. Um, so yeah, it's, you know, I'm not like a hundred percent, you know, that's how I look at that. But yeah, I've noticed passive aggressiveness just in general. Like it's, you know, I know I just talked about like regions. Um, but yeah, it's, it's like a general trait and that's, I don't know, for me, like, um, I'm just, my mindset is always like, you know, truthful, collaborative communication, you know, like that's, I, I don't have like a desire to be like the alpha female, you know, like I don't care about social hierarchy in particular in the way like a lot of other people do. That's always confused me too. I'm just like, well, you have your, I mean, the most important thing is God and your friends and family and like everybody has their own responsibilities and like, you know, I'm not competing with every single person you know, like I'm com- like right now I'm just, I'm competing with other cleaners, you know, but I'm not competing with anybody else, you know, so I don't, um, and all I have to do is just have the best, like do the best job and have the best price, you know, like that's it, you know? Um, so I, I just like, I don't, I, I don't know, like the competitiveness, right. But I, I understand where it comes from. Like I know enough about American culture and like the media, like I'm, you know, I know where it comes from. It just, it just annoys me at this point. You know, I think people are, 
like you could say like you know I always joke about the like sigma female grind set thing right and one of the things with like the sigma idea is that they don't care about the social hierarchy that's why I always joke about it because I somewhat relate to it because like I don't particularly care that much about the social hierarchy I care a little bit though and so in my mind like I'm actually thinking like you know if it's normal to care about the social hierarchy in that way, like in that intense way, then yeah, I think those people are overly concerned with the social hierarchy at the expense of their health and well-being and the health and well-being of their friends and family. So I don't think that I'm like not concerned. I think that other people are overly concerned and looking at life in the completely wrong way, you know? Um, (laughs) Okay, like that's actually how I look at that. Um, You know, it's... um, like, I think there's an assumption, right? Because, uh, you know, everyone assumes like everybody kind of wants the same thing, right? So we see like successful people and then we just kind of assume that everybody respects them and everybody admires them, right? But like, how many times have we seen like some kind of idealized, you, you know, family right here on YouTube, right? Like rise and fall, right? Because it's like they paint this picture perfect image of their family and it turns out there's a lot of corruption and toxic, unhealthy behavior behind the scenes, right? That's pretty typical. That's like not unique. That's actually very typical because the people who have the best image in their life are usually people who that's their main concern. Their concern is not to have integrity or to do the right thing or be a good person, right? And some people do build a good reputation by actually being a good person, you know, that's still possible. But a lot of people just have that image and that's not actually who they are. You know, um, it's, and it's easy. Like if your main concern is your reputation and you put all your energy and effort to maintaining a good reputation, like if you're putting the work in, it'll probably work, but it doesn't mean that that person is actually good. It just means that they care very much about maintaining their reputation. Um, and they'll do whatever they can. They'll manipulate, right? Because that involves like manipulating people who are willing to tell the truth about you. You know what I mean? Like that's like kind of how that works sometimes. I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. But yeah. Um, so that's what I wanted to say. You know, those are the kinds of, I, I think about that kind of stuff all the time. I hope I'm making sense. But uh, I also uh, watched The Beach last night. Um, I haven't seen The Beach in a very long time. It's a Leonardo DiCaprio movie. I think it came out in 2000. And I absolutely love that movie. I, it's from Danny Boyle, who also did Train Spotting, And he has another movie, too, that I really liked. Um, but, you know, like Train Spotting. Oh, I guess... Um, I'm wondering if Requiem for a Dream... If, or if that was someone different. Because what Requiem for a Dream gives me, like... I wouldn't be surprised if that is also Danny Boyle. But I, I don't... I'm, I have a weird feeling it's not him. It's just similar. Um, but yeah, those stories of, like... Which is really sharp commentary on modern life. You know, like in train spotting And also, like, modern problems, right? Like drug addiction and stuff like that. Um, but the beach is particularly interesting... Because, you know, if you remember, like, Instagram in the 2010s, right? Like, I remember people making fun of, like, you know, the girl who just traveled to Europe, right? And you would see these people, like, their whole Instagram is just, like, travel, travel, travel. And, like, people, like, you know, it's very typical, right? Um, And there were a lot of movies that came out when I was growing up that were about like, you know, leaving it all behind and traveling. Right. And this isn't really a new idea, right? Like there's plenty of like examples. Um, who am I thinking of? Like, like Jack London or like the, the alone in the wilderness documentary, but you know, like into the wild, you know, like came out when I was a teenager and there were like lots of movies like that. And the beach was one of them where it's like, Oh, I'm so sick of like the rat race of modern life. Like I don't want to do what everyone else does. I don't want to be normal. You know, what is normal, right? You're just sitting on your, you know, just sitting on your butt watching mindless television shows, you know, like, which of course, like, I think I still relate to that concept, right? Like I don't want to live like a normie, you know, in that way, in that kind of classic, you know, eating Cheetos and watching television kind of way. Um, you know, but the, I like the beach because it shows the dark side of, 
like when you leave society all behind, because normally those experiences are po- are painted in this very positive light, like the movie Eat, Pray, Love or the book Eat, Pray, Love, right? Like this woman gets divorced and like, it's just this amazing enlightening thing. Like she goes to India, you know, um, but in the beach, it, like it's, you know, he tries to escape normality and like, and totally fall off the face of the earth and like leave his parents, leave his friends and family. And it ends up being this like toxic situation. And eventually he escapes the beach and, you know, but he doesn't go straight back to America. He doesn't go straight back to like his normal life. Um, like I think he sort of stays in Southeast Asia. Um, and so the end of the movie is like him still kind of like traveling around, but he's more like he's in a, um, you know, internet cafe, um, in Southeast Asia. So like, you know, he's still like kind of in the real world, but he's, you know, still kind of on his journey or whatever. Um, you know, something I thought like on a side note, this isn't really relevant to what I've been talking about. Um, but it was funny to see Leonardo DiCaprio like play like a really, really average dude. Cause I'm so used to now like seeing Leonardo DiCaprio play like larger than life characters. So it's like super weird. And also like, you know, he's a lot younger and everything too. Like, and I'm just like, it's really weird to see him like just be normal, like as a character. Um, but anyways, um, but yeah, like that, you know, I really liked that movie when I was younger. Um, and now it means different things to me, right? Like, I I don't think, like, probably the last time I saw that movie, I was probably, like, still a teenager, like, almost 20 or something like that. Um, and, uh, like, I didn't, I didn't have enough experience and understanding to, like, fully appreciate that movie. Same with, like, train spotting and, and all those other things. Um, yeah, like, speak, by the way, like, I've just kind of, like, loosened up a little bit like um you know I've talked a lot about like my spirituality and like I've mentioned like you know me and secular media right but I feel like I've just been pushing and pushing for something like you know because I've been exposed to like orthodox Christianity but it just it's not feeling right and I feel like I've been pushing and pushing and it's it's almost like it's like backfiring on me so like I'm trying to like loosen up a little bit, um, and try a different approach because, um, also I just, I have this sense of like returning to normalcy in a way on certain, for certain things. Um, and I'm gaining a lot of insight from that, you know? Um, I don't know. I know I'm like kind of being vague a little bit right now. I'm not like, (laughs) you know, I know what I'm talking about, but you guys don't, you know, like I'm sorry, I might be a little too comfortable on my YouTube channel. I don't know, (laughs) you know, um, but I'm like this kind of in general, like I'm a bit of an open book of a person. And yes, I know there's dangers to being like that. I've learned that the hard way. Um, but I think I'll be all right. I've survived a lot of stuff up to this point and I'm feeling pretty confident in myself. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. Um, but I do trust God. So there you go. Um, and yeah, I think that's it for this week. Again, like uploads are going to be kind of sporadic just because, um, you know, I've got other stuff going on. Um, but I hope I love you guys so much. I will definitely like, I think I can definitely manage to like, at least get a video a week, you know, out. Um, so, you know, I just don't know like what day it'll be cause I'm kind of on, you know, I've got other timelines I got to adhere to, so to speak. <laughs> Um, also I, I haven't seen any of fish tank just real quick. Like, and I've been kind of easing up on watching like Sam Hyde and even scuffed realtor a lot. Um, but, uh, you know, I have, I am like subscribed to, um, or I follow Sam on Twitter or X. Um, and so I see a lot of fish tank updates over there and it like, I'm like, gosh, I kind of want to, you know, I want to look into it because like, it looks, it looks, you know, they redid the house and everything like, yeah, just, that's just, you know, little side note. Okay. Um, that's the end. I will see you guys next week. Uh, next week. I love you guys and bye.